idea, a synopsis, uh, uh, you know, the, the insight that I have found that I'm going to be reading a lot from is from the book of James, I, I'm sorry, from the, from the, uh, about James and uh, actually James and John, WD, but it's mostly about James. And uh, I just found it to be a good book and uh, it's a lot of things that have to do with his personality. It has to do with uh, his zeal. And there are a lot of <clears throat> other details that have to do with uh, what surrounds what we have, uh, what we have about James, what we know about James. But before I get into that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to pray into any uh, prayer requests or uh, any uh, praise reports that would like to be shared shared tonight. I'd like to pray for uh, I asked last night for Denise. Her name is Denise Mitchell. Denise Little? Mitchell. Mitchell. M-I-T-C-A-C-L-L, yes. Her strength, uh, she has to take care of her older brother who has dementia. And I, as I said last night, he has family, she has other family. She has two brothers and he has children, but no, everybody's abandoned him. Nobody wants to do anything. So she stepped up and she said she can't see him going in a nursing facility. She's going to do what she can to take care of him. So just pray for the Lord will give her the strength that she needs. And that the family will come together. I asked for that too last night. The family will see what's necessary and they will come together. And also pray for her and her sons. Family restoration for Denise and her two sons. Thank you. Restoration. Okay. Amen. Anybody else? Okay. Well, we're going to go ahead and just open up in prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, uh, we just want to come before you tonight, Lord, and we just, uh, our, our hearts and our minds are pulling towards you, Lord, and we are acknowledging you in this hour. We ask, Father God, that you would help us to continue to pray for one another and to believe, Lord, that your word, hallelujah, your word, Lord God, will come to pass, Father. We thank you, Father, that you've given us the wisdom and the insight to know that we can come to you and asking what we will according to your will, according to your word, Father, that you might answer us and that you might say yes to our requests. And if you say no, God, whatever your will is, Father, it is your perfect will and you have every right, Father, to give us an answer uh, for now or give us an answer for later, Father. We just know that it is in the power of your hands to, to, uh, um, to answer us. And uh, we come before you, Lord, tonight in the name of Jesus, Lord. We lift up our hearts and our minds to you, Lord. First of all, we wanna thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you, Lord God, for your grace and we thank you for your mercy we thank you lord god for your loving kindness father we just thank you lord god and in all of our hearts we know that we every time we get on lord that we have these reasons for praising you and thanking you lord and yet we understand and know that the praises lord that we give are inadequate and that they are short compared to what our praise really ought to be, Father, because of your goodness. 
because of your grace, because of your mercy, because of who you are, Father. You are so great, Father God. You're great in our lives, Lord. You're great in the earth, Lord, and all things are done according to your plan, according to your will, Lord. So we say thank you, Lord God, for this day that you have made, Lord God, this day that we shall, we should, and we ought to rejoice in. We thank you, Lord God, that this day is kind of almost over with, Lord God, but you're with us each and every moment, Lord, to the very end, until the next day, Lord God, until another sun shiny day comes or, or a, 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 sh a shower or whatever it is that you have planned, Lord God, to water the grass or whatever the condition may be, Lord, this day, Lord God, is a day that you have made and we are, will rejoice in it. We thank you, Lord God, for your salvation. We thank you, Lord God, for your plan, Lord. We thank you, Father, that we have the strength that we have and the mobilities of our limbs, Lord God. And we thank you, Father God, for the very thoughts of our mind, God. We thank you, Lord, for the very heart that pumps the blood through our veins, Lord. We, we thank you, Lord God, that you've given us an alertness of knowing, God, that everything around us, Lord God, is within your control and within your command, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for the very eyes that we have, Father, to see what you have done, Lord God, to be able to behold your beauty, Lord God, and all that you have done with the miraculous power of your hand, Lord God, of creativity. We thank you, Lord God, for how you are moving by your spirit in and out of our lives, Lord God, in our lives, Lord God, to help us and out of our lives because we ask that you would go and fix whatever ailments that there may be. If we pray for someone, Lord, your spirit will go forth, Father God, and to do all that you command to do, Lord God, by the commandment of your lips, Lord. We, we thank you, Lord God, for your word. We thank you, Father God, for your understanding, Lord. We, we thank you, Lord God, for the wisdom that we receive, Father. And we thank you, Lord God, for your greatness, Lord. I pray right now for each and every person, Lord, here on this line, Father, and those who may come on later, those who might not even be on this line, for whatever reason, God, we lift them up to you right now. Father, I thank you for our pastor, Pastor Carter, Lord, and his wife, Lord God. But thank you, Lord God, that you have blessed them, Lord, and that you have caused them to come together in union, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for their family, Lord God, because we know that they are a part of him, Father. And so we thank you. We thank you for Pastor Shannon, God. We thank you for her family, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, that you have met and that you are meeting every need, Lord, and how you are blessing them, Lord, and how you are causing them to be victorious, Lord God, and see the miraculous wonder of your hand, Lord God, of blessing them, God, in all the directions and everything in their lives, Lord. Continue to watch over them, Lord. Continue to bless them and give them strength. Lord, we present them to you, Lord, in this time of prayer. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for the Blue family. I thank you, Father God, that you give them strength, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for each and every elder, Lord God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God, for each and every minister, Lord God, and uh, we thank you, Lord God, for the deacons, Lord, and we thank you, Lord God, for all of the mothers, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you are watching over each and every one of us, Lord, and there's not one of us that can hide. It's not one of us, Lord God, that you will not behold each and every moment and each and, of each and every day, Father God. Touch right now, God, even my wife, Father God, in the name of Jesus. You know, I pray for her always, Lord, even if I might not mention her online, God, but tonight, Lord, I pray that you would strengthen her and that you would give her an encouragement in her heart to know that everything's going to be all right. We thank you, Lord God, that you are going to fix, Lord God, all of the ailments, all of the problems, Lord God, that are trying to arise. Lord, we rebuke them right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, bless and touch every person, Lord, who might even be sick on this line today, Lord. We lift up this request to you, Father, that you would just watch over us, that you would fix, Lord God, that you would heal, Lord God, and that you would do, Lord, what you know best. 
We praise your name right now for each and every person, Lord God, and their families, Lord. Each and every person, Lord God, that we have lifted up in prayer, Lord God, whether on this line or whether we were in our own secret closet, in our secret place, Lord God, as we remember, Lord God, those whom we have called out, Father, for your blessing, Lord, for your healing, for your correction, Lord, for your change, Lord. We thank you, Father. We do this because we know that in your word that we are to pray for one another, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, that we are doing your will in this aspect of our spiritual lives, Lord. Move right now, God. Hallelujah. Lord, bless them with finances, God, if they need it, Lord. Bless them, Lord God. Hallelujah. For whatever it is that they might call out for you to bless them with, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, even for correction, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, that you pull our coattails and that you cause us to understand, God, that we are to go in a different direction, Lord God, if we are not going in the direction that we need to go, Lord God. If we're doing something wrong, we may or may not know about, Lord. We ask that you would forgive us and that you would help us, Lord God, to get back on track. Whatever the case might be, Father, Whatever the situation is, Lord God, we know that you're able to take care of it. Thank you for taking care of us. Thank you for blessing us, Lord God, with your great compassion and love, Lord. We bless your mighty name, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray, God, right now that you would bless those who are homeless, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, touch their lives right now, God, wherever they may be, Lord. We thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah that you will meet every need, Lord, that you will feed them, Lord, that you will bless them, Lord, and use us, Lord God, to be an answer, Lord God, and a help to somebody, Lord God. Hallelujah. We pray for those, Lord God, who are in the government and in office, Lord God, that you would, oh Lord God, that you would just make corrections, Lord, and that you would just bless and move, Lord God, in their lives, Lord, that they may be the responsible uh, government officials that we need for them to be, Lord God, for the well-being and for the good of the people, Father. We thank you, Lord God, that you are blessing each and every church member, Lord God, who is of the body of Christ, Lord, those who are saved, God. Oh, God, strengthen us that we continue to pray for those who are unsaved, those who are still, Lord God, in the need of you, Lord God. Help us to understand and know that they need a Savior, Father God. Hallelujah. Oh, God, bless us with the word of knowledge and insight that we need, that we might receive, Lord God, their attention as we speak the word, as we speak, Lord God, the truth of your word, Lord God, and who you are and, and what you are. Thank you for the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, that fills our lives with truth and leads us back to the Savior, Lord God, hallelujah, in every area, Lord, in every life, Father God. We give you praise, Lord. Father, right now, I just ask that you would bless, Lord God, uh, Denise Mitchell, Lord God, and her family, Lord God, that you would believe, give her strength, Lord, Lord God, for, for taking care of her son, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you would take care of their family, Lord God. The Restoration Temple, Lord God, those who are praying right now. Lord, each and every person that is intertwined in this uh, family, Lord God, we pray, God, that you would meet and touch each and every person, Lord. Meet every need, Father God, in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Watch over them, God. Do a new thing, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do a thing, God, that will cause them to know that you are in their lives, that you are there for them, Lord, and that you are watching over them and that you are answering, and that you are blessing, God. Give us the assurance we need from Father God. Hallelujah, to know that you are able to do it, Lord God, so that when we pray, Lord God, that we have confidence in knowing, God, that you are going to say yes, Lord. Thank you. We bless your mighty name tonight, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I just give you praise right now, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Oh, God, right now, the name, the Elder Shaw, Lord, right now, Father, I just ask that you would touch her, Lord, that you would bless her, Lord, and her family, Father. You know, she's praying for her family, Father, and we know that you are able. We thank you, Lord God, that you are hearing and answering her 
prayer, Lord God. Right now, God, ah, Elder Ruaz, Lord, in the name of Jesus, continue to bless and give her strength, Father. Move right now, God, on her behalf, Father. Continue, Lord God, to help her, Lord, to believe you in every area, Lord, that you are blessing her, God, even when it might not even look like it, God. Well, we have faith to believe, God, that you are able, Lord, and we thank you that you can and that you will, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I need a duly, Lord God, is in my just came on my my mind, Lord. And I just pray, Father, that you would, whatever her prayers is, God, whatever she's looking for you. I know she has great faith in you, Lord God. And so we're asking God that you will continue to bless her, continue to be with her, Lord God, and continue to strengthen her, Father, and her expectations of your blessings for her, Lord God, that they be answered, that they be given, Father, according to your will. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I just, I'm just i thinking about Renee Matt right now, God. I don't know exactly why, but Father God, but whatever you put on my heart, Lord, whoever they may be, Lord, touch her right now, Lord. Touch her family right now. Move right now by the power of your hand, God. Answer every prayer, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Meet every need, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, oh God, I pray for the Blue family, Lord God, but right now, Kevin, Blue is on my mind. Deacon, Kevin, Lord, bless and move right now, God, and continue to restore, continue, Lord God, to help him to continue to recover in fullness, Lord God, and whatever his ailments are, God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Bless the Rogers family, Lord. Hallelujah. Move right now, God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Lord, touch right now, God. Whatever they need, Lord, from you. Lord, bless. Move right now, God, on behalf of their request of you, Lord, and their faith in you. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, move right now in their family, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh God, Mother Ham right now, God. Hallelujah, it's coming on my mind. Father, bless and move right now, God. Hallelujah, she's a special woman, God. Hallelujah, touch right now, Lord God, her and her family, Lord God. Her son, Scott, Father God, hallelujah. Mother Pat, Lord God, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Her sister, the the other sister, God, for whatever reason, my mind, Hallelujah, is thinking of her, but I can't think of a name right now, God, but you know who she is, Lord God. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I just praise your name right now and ask, oh, God, that you would touch and move those with those three sisters, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, their children, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God, move right now, God. Hallelujah. Oh, God, bless and move right now, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mother Horton, oh, God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. Each and every mother, God. Oh, God. Strengthen, strengthen, strengthen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Oh, God, thank you, Lord. Thank you for meeting every request, Lord. Thank you for meeting every answer, Lord. God, for giving us every answer for every request, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, God, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, God, thank you, Lord. Lord, let your spirit be felt, Lord God. Let your spirit, Lord God, fill us, Lord God, right now, from the crown of the head to the sole of the feet. 
Oh God, move, Lord, in the name of Jesus, which is every household, Lord. Oh God, thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for how you're answering. Thank you for saying yes. Thank you, Lord God, for hearing my prayer tonight, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for answering every prayer. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. Can't thank you enough, God, but we thank you, Lord God, in the precious name of Jesus Christ. And now, Father, as we move on, Lord God, in this session, Lord God, this, this day, Lord, I pray that you would help me, Lord God, to get across, Lord, what you have given me, Lord God, what I know that I have to do, Lord God, hallelujah, to bring forth your word, Lord. I praise you and I thank you for it right now, God, in the precious name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Anybody came on late, would like to uh, have anything to say? Anything? Uh, I, just want, I, I have something, um, Elder Harris. A couple of years ago, Chandler met his biological mother and siblings. His mother has passed since that time, and today he lost a brother. So if we could just keep him in prayer and and his um family i would appreciate that thank you oh my god thank you lord oh god thank you jesus a new day but nothing new up under the sun oh god oh god thank you lord god hallelujah Oh, God, bless Chandler right now, Lord, if he's hurt, if he's in any pain, Father. We know, ask that you would reach out to him, Lord, right now, Father, and his family, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that you would touch the hurting heart, Lord God, the disappointment, Lord God. Hallelujah. Move right now, God. I've always said it, and I'm going to say it even yet again. There's nothing that takes you by surprise, God. Nothing you didn't know, God. Nothing that didn't happen, God, that you had already planned, that you already knew, Lord God. But the surprise is always with us, Lord. Move right now, Father, on his life, on their life. Give them strength. Lord, let your peace come upon them. Let them know, God, hallelujah, that you're there with them, Father. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for saying yes. We thank you, Lord God, for helping us to know who we can pray for. And even at times when we know what there are specifics in our prayer, Father God. We thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for meeting each and every need in his life, Father. Continue to be with him, Lord. Continue to travel with him and be with him, Lord God. As he moves forward, Father, as the family moves forward, we thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Anyone else? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, well, we praise the Lord tonight for another Bible study session. Uh, James, the apostle, he is, he was a uh, apostle of of passion. Um, as I read in, in this particular uh, book about him, I knew that I was going to be reading a lot because it's, it's, even though we know very little about him, you know, uh, there still there were a lot of things that had to do in lining up with uh, what he was and who he was through other uh, epistles, through other uh, uh, documented of Old Testament scriptures, uh, for instance, like Elijah, hallelujah, you know, and um, we just thank God because out of the uh, three, there were three main apostles and of the three uh, disciples uh, in Jesus, his closest inner, which they were actually his closest inner circle. And James is actually the least familiar to us uh, and in the biblical accounts is practically uh, devout in his explicit details about his life and his character. And he never appeared as a standalone character in the gospel accounts, but he is 
always paired up with his younger and better known brother, who is John. And the only time he is mentioned by himself is in the book of Acts where his martyrdom is recorded. And so um, just to uh, kind of give you a synopsis on it, from the book of, of Acts chapter 12, it reads and it says that about the time King Herod violently attacked some who belonged to the church, and he executed James, John's brother, with the sword. We know that actually the sword that he, uh, what he did with the sword and killing him was that he was beheaded. But he killed them with the sword. And um, when he saw that it pleased the Jews, he actually proceeded to arrest Peter too during the festival of unleavened bread. After his arrest, he, they put him in prison and they assigned uh, four squads of four soldiers, which uh, each of them was a guard to them. I'm off camera. Okay, I didn't realize it. Okay, so uh, to continue, so Peter was kept in prison, but the church was praying fervently uh, for him. You bet you just told me I was off. Line. I was off camera here, so let me put myself back on. Hallelujah. Okay. All right. Amen. So, um, so uh, this was this this was the standalone uh, time that they referred to for uh, for James. Uh, like I said, the, all the other times they were always gathered. It was either him and John, or or uh, it was uh, him, John, or Peter. Um, there were times that the Lord, when he called them to uh, come together, it was always for some specific reason. It was always those three that he would ask to join him in uh, whatever it is that he would call uh, them to do. Um, the relatives, I'm going to start reading some of these things because I really, I really wish I could, could have with all of my mind, remember all the words and all of the things that there were that I read about, you know, but because I cannot retain all of it at the time, it is so significant. I want to kind of like not oversee any of the, um, some of the things that they, uh, that is described here uh, in this book. Uh, so uh, starting at this script here, Hallelujah. Okay, uh, so um, the hints about James and John were often referred to as simply as the sons of Zebedee. Uh, and you can find that reference in Mark chapter 20, verse 20, and also in the, uh, uh, chapter 26 and uh, 37, then there's a certain amount of scriptures that, that point to that, and it signifies that Zebedee was some man of importance. Zebedee's uh, prestige might have stemmed from his financial success and his family's lineage, or from both. Uh, we are apparently quite, he was apparently quite well to do, and his fishing business was large enough to employ certain uh, hired servants uh, that we can find in references to Mark. Uh, moreover, uh, Zebedee's entire family he had enough status that the Apostle John was known as high, was known to the high priest, and that this is how John was able to get Peter uh, admitted to the high priest's courtyard on the night of Jesus' arrest. Um, there is some evidence from the early church recording that Zebedee was a Levite and closely related to the high priest's family. Um, whatever the reason for Zebedee's prominence, it was clear from scripture that he was a man of importance and his family's reputation 
reached from Galilee all the way to the high priest uh, household in Jerusalem. James, as the elder brother from which a prominent fam this prominent family might have felt that with, by all rights, he should have been the chief apostles. Indeed, that this may be one of the main reasons that there were so many disputes, which of them should be considered the greatest. If y'all can remember, even at the time when they were at the Last Supper, they talked about who was the greatest in the kingdom. And of course, Jesus had to kind of disappoint all of them and said that a child who is like a child is the greatest. Whoever would be like a child is the greatest in the kingdom. And so there were disputes and James never actually took place, first place among the apostles except in one regard and that he was the first one to be martyred. And so uh, James is much more significant in his figure that he might consider based on what little we know about him. And in two of the list of apostles, his name actually comes immediately after Peter. Um, and so there is good reason to assume that he was a stronger leader, but probably second in the influence after Peter, because you know, Peter was often uh, talked about it. Peter was often pointed out in scripture and not so much James. So in that regard, they're saying that he was kind of like second to Peter, but yet he was still significant. And of course, James also figures prominently in the close inner circle of the three. Uh, he, Peter, and John were the only ones, Jesus, as I mentioned before, Peter uh, and John and, and, and uh, James were the only ones that a lot of time were permitted to go with him, even at the time, if you can remember the time where they went to Jair, Jairus's daughter and raised her from the dead. The same group of three witnesses Jesus's glory on the Mount of Transfiguration. Uh, James was among four disciples who questioned Jesus privately at the Mount of Olives. He was included again when Peter and James, with Peter and James, when the Lord urged those three to pray with him privately at the uh, uh, Garden of Gethsemane. Uh, so as a member of a small circle, he was privileged to witness Jesus's power in the raising of the dead. And he saw his glory when Jesus was transfigured. He saw Christ's sovereignty in the way that the Lord's unfolding of the future of them on Mount Olive. And he saw the Savior's agony also in the garden. All of these events must have uh, strengthened his faith immensely, and it also equipped him for the suffering and the martyrdom he himself would eventually face. Uh, if there's a key word that applies to the life of the Apostle James, the word is passion. He was passionate. And from that the little we know about him, it is obvious that he was a man of intense fervor and intensity. Uh, in fact, Jesus gave James and John a nickname, and it was uh, Boaner Boanerges, which means the sons of thunder. That defines James's personality in various vivid terms. Uh, he was zealous. He was thunderous. He was he was passionate and he was fervent. He reminds us of Jehu in the Old Testament, who was known for driving his chariot at breakneck speed uh, over in 2 John chapter 9, verse 20. And who said, come with me, see my zeal for the Lord. Then annihilated the house of Ahab and swept away Baal worshipers from the land. But Jehu's passion was a passion that was out of control, and his zeal for the Lord turned out to be tainted with selfish, worldly ambitions and the most bloodthirsty kind of cruelty. In fact, the scripture says Jehu took no heed to walk in the law of the Lord God of Israel. Even with all of his heart, he didn't. And so uh, he didn't depart from the sins of 
uh, Jeroboam. Uh, he had made Israel sin. The apostle James' zeal was also mixed with similar ambitious and bloodthirsty tendencies, though in much milder doses. And he may have been beheaded down a, I'm sorry, he may have been headed, he may have headed down a similar road to ruin when Jesus met him. But by God's grace, he was actually transformed into a man of God and became one of the leading apostles. Hallelujah. Uh, Mark's recording of James, of, of Jesus called James and John, as I mentioned before, but now we're including John as the sons of thunder, uh, included in the fact that his list of the 12, mentioning it in the way that he noted that Simon was called Peter. He didn't know how often Jesus employed his nickname for James and, and John. And Mark's mention of it is the only time it appears in all of scripture. But unlike Peter's name, which is obviously intended to help encourage and shape Peter's character towards a rock-like steadfastness, uh, it seemed to have been bestowed on the sons of Zebedee to chide with them that they allowed their natural fervorish temperaments to get out of hand. Uh, perhaps the Lord even used it for humorous, for humorous effect while employing it as a gentle uh, ad admonishment. Um, I got a lot of the other uh, things that, that have to do, but I'm going to skip over a little bit. And I'm going to start reading here. It says that um, it talks about the zeal. Uh, we mentioned that he was zealous. And uh, the scripture in Romans is, uh, but sometimes the zeal is less than righteous. Zeal apart from knowledge can be damage can be damaging. And so this was part of Pete, uh, James's problem was that his zeal was enough that it would be damaging. You know, uh, zeal because the zeal without wisdom is dangerous, and zeal mixed with insensitivity is also cruel. So whenever zeal uh, disintegrates into uncontrolled passion, it can be deadly. And James sometimes had a tendency to let such uh, misguided zeal to get the better of him. And two incidences in particular illustrates this. One is the uh, uh, um, episode when James uh, wanted to call down fire. Uh, the other is the time when James and John enlisted their mother's help to lobby for the highest seat in the kingdom. And if you can remember uh, that part of them being called, that the mother came to uh, to ask if ask Jesus if they could have a seat with him on one on his left and one on his right. And of course, Jesus had responded, it is not my, uh, it's not uh, up to me as to whether or not he sits, they sit on my right hand or on my left, but this is only God's um, um, power that has to do with that. And so um, talking about fire from heaven, so we get the glimpse as to why James and John were known as the sons of thunder because uh, Jesus was prepared to pass through Samaria and he headed to Jerusalem for the final Passover, which he knew would culminate in his death, burial, and resurrection. So Luke writes, now it comes to pass when the time had come for him to be received up, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem and to set messenger before his face. And as they went, he entered a village of the Samaritans to prepare for him, but they didn't receive him because his face was set for the journey at Jeru uh, to Jerusalem. It is significant that Jesus chose to go through Samaria, even though the shortest route from Galilee to Jerusalem went straight through Samaria, and most Jews traveled between those two places deliberately took a route that inquired them to travel many miles out of the way 
uh, so that they would go through barren places in, in uh, Perea, uh, re uh, requiring them to cross the Jordan twice so that they could avoid Samaria. Because you know, the Samaritans, as you remember, if you recall, the Samaritans were not the favorite people and they always avoided the Samaritans, you know. Uh, they were a mixed race and they were offsprings of Israelites from the North Kingdom. When Israel was conquered by the Assyrians, the most prominent and influential people in their tribe were taken into captivity and the land was resettled with pagans and foreigners who were loyal to the Assyrian king. Uh, their reference is in 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 24 and 34, uh, 24 through 34. Poor Israelites were remained in the land and intermarried with those pagans. So from the be very beginning, the interloping pagans did not prosper in the land because they did not fear the Lord. So the king of Assyria went back, one of the priests whom he had taken captive in order to teach the people how to fear the Lord. And so the result was a religion that blended elements of truth and paganism. They feared the Lord. They uh, served their own gods according to the rituals of the nations from whom they uh, were carried away. In, uh, in other words, they were uh, still claimed to be worshiping Jehovah as God, but except that they uh, were founded, that uh, they founded their own priesthood, they built their own temples, they uh, devised a sacrificial system of their own making. Uh, in short, they made a new religion based in part of the pagan traditions. And you know, I find that when I when I read that. It, Turn to mind how we as Christians, we say we praise the Lord. And I'm not saying all of us, but we praise the Lord. And but when we praise the Lord, we have our own way. Once we get out of prayer, we go back to doing some of the things that we were doing that does not uh, uh, illustrate our real strong belief or faith in the Lord because we find ourselves falling short you know, in, in many in many cases. We make in our minds that we worship God, but in our minds, and not all of us, like I said, uh, have this idea that we're, we have a God that we believe in who, don't ex who doesn't exist. Like God loves us so much, he would not allow us to go to, uh, to hell. You know, how, what kind of God, loving God would do that? But that is who God is. He will allow us to go to to hell because of the life that we live, the life that we chose to live a life that is less than what God expects us to live like, you know? And so um, we have to be careful about uh, thinking that we're worshiping and praising the God of heaven. And then in our hearts and our minds, we're serving someone else who we say is uh, the God of heaven, when in short, it, he may not be in our own hearts and our minds. And then that causes us to have to repent. If hopefully we'll realize it and we will repent and that we'll go back to the God of holiness and we will ask him to forgive us and to give us strength and give us insight and to give, continue us with this knowing that God is God and he is who we should worship. And so the Samaritans religion is a classic example of what happens when the authority of scripture is subjugated to human tradition. The original site of the Samaritans temple was in Mount Ger uh, um, Gerizim in and, and, and Samaria. Uh, the temple was built during the time of Alexander the Great, but it had been destroyed about 125 years before the birth of Christ. And so if you can remember when uh, when Jesus met the Samaritan woman, she mentioned about how uh, their fathers worshiped in the mountains. And so um, the Samaritan woman in John chapter four and 20 said to Jesus, our fathers worship on this mountain. And you Jews say that, the, that in Jerusalem is a place where we ought to worship. And so obviously this was the chief point under dispute between the Jews and the Samaritans. 
And to this day, a small group of Samaritans actually still descends and still worships in Mount Gerizim. Uh, many of the original Israelite descendants who later, uh, later returned to Samaria from captivity were also the product of inter uh, marriage with the pagans. So the culture of Samaria suited them perfectly. Uh, of course, the Jews regarded the Samaritans as a mongrel race and their religion as a mongrel religion. That is why during the time of Christ, uh, such pains were taken to avoid to travel through the Samaria and to go the longer route. And the entire region was deemed unclean. But Jesus, you know, he knew who he was. As he didn't take the long route. He went straight through because stuff like that didn't bother him. Stuff like that didn't overtake him or, or be a part of, of, of uh, you know, he didn't have a problem with it like, like everybody else did. And so, um, so this was the leading up to uh, uh, actually it, going back. I'm thinking about... Um, uh, um, oh my God, my brain has gone freeze. Um, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Woo. Okay, 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 okay. Hallelujah. I'm looking for what I'm looking for here. Okay, I'm thinking about Elijah. Um, Elijah seen and knew of these uh, things that uh, the pagans did. Uh, he actually uh, was one as to the reason why James had, because I mentioned earlier that James had talked about calling down fire from heaven. And he got that example from Elijah because Elijah actually did the same thing. Um, um, let me see. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Um, there was a captain that spoke, and he said that this captain uh, said, man of God, he was talking to Elijah, man of God, the king has come. The king has said, come down. And he was calling him down because they were going, they wanted to kill him. So Elijah's reply was to the point, if I am a man of God, then let fire come down from heaven and consume you and your 50 men. And fire came down from heaven and consumed him and his 50 men. The Hebrew expression suggests that the entire company was uh, utterly consumed and it redu they were reduced to ashes in an instant. And that's some powerful fire. Um, this apparently occurred in the presence of witnesses who reported the matter back to the king. But Ahizu was a foolishly stubborn man. When he sent to him another 50 and his 50 men, and he answered and said to him, Man of God, thus said the king, come down quickly. So Elijah answered again and said to them, if a man, if I am a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume you and your 50 men. And the fire came down from heaven and consumed him 
and his 50 men. Uh, incredibly, Ahazia had enough and he sent another company of another 50 men. But the captain of this third group uh, who heard about the, the consumption of them because of the fire was smart and he was wise. And he uh, approached Elijah this time in his way humbly and pleaded for the lives of his men. So this time the angel of the Lord instructed Elijah to go to the soldiers and to confront uh, Ahaziah uh, personally. And Elijah went with them and delivered the message of doom to Ahaziah personally. And he died according to the word of the Lord, which Elijah had spoke. So all of that had taken place in the very regions through which Jesus proposed to travel through Jerusalem. The story of Elijah's final tri uh, fiery triumph was well known to the, the, to the disciples. And it was one of the classic Old Testament episodes that would have been reminded of uh, uh, merely by traveling through this district. Now, uh, they're leading all the way up to when Jesus, uh, with Jesus, you know, Jesus came, he said that I came not to destroy. Uh, I came to set a sword and I came to, uh, to save that which was lost. And so, you know, even we, we see that Jesus came because of the sinfulness of man and because of the sinfulness of man, uh, many people without thinking about how God came through Christ in mercy, uh, said that these people ought to be destroyed because of the sinfulness of their nature, of who they are. And so uh, um, James, I believe, was one of them that had this idea that, you know, Jesus came to, to uh, uh, save us. He came, but he came in a way that uh, in saving us, he, he also had to deal with sinners. He had to deal with, with the shortcomingness of man's nature. And so James actually said, well, you know what, Jesus, uh, maybe, I should fall, uh, maybe I should call fire down from heaven, you know? And so this was a mission that he was on. And then, of course, uh, again, I, I mentioned the fact that he said he came not to, to destroy, but he came to save and to serve and to give his life for a ransom of many. And so um, he said, I have come as a light into the world that whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. And if anyone hears my words and does not believe, I will not judge him for I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. Uh, okay, of course, uh, as there was a time that was coming when Christ is going to judge the world, but he wasn't going to judge the world at that time because he came to save. And so uh, James in his, in his, intolerance you know and in his zeal uh it was it almost kind of kind of destroyed him but it also led him to a place where god once he called him once he saved him he became a man of god and he changed his way and began to preach the gospel as it should have been and uh calling on the name of the lord and telling people about christ and you know we know that the the jews that didn't like didn't really accept christ uh, began to uh, reject the disciples and reject James and reject all of the things that had to do with um, um, the differences that they had and their ideas of what uh, salvation was or how, how Christ came to, to save that which was lost. And so uh, this was one of the reasons why the, his zeal was sold to the point where, you know, they had enough of James. And so they decided they were going to behead him and they decided they were going to cause him to be the first one out of all of them because all of all of the apostles they they died a certain death. I think it's only one that died in, of old age. I can't remember who it is, but most of the disciples were martyred, and most of them were uh, either like Peter. He was um, um, he was put upside down uh, on a cross. Um, you know, there were so many things that had happened to them because of their righteous 
uh, um, um, stand for for God and who Christ who Christ was. And I, you know, I, I would I I don't think I'd like the idea that I might be martyred or anything like that. But but my I have to accept the fact that if I'm going to stand for the Lord, you know, if we are going to stand for the Lord, that we are going to stand for the Lord, and no matter what may come, no matter what might happen. You know, there are a lot of people today that have uh, preached Christ and they were put in jail or, or they were, uh, uh, you know, taken out of commission. And this is the promise. We always talk about the promise of God and how God wants to bless us. But, you know, the promise of God is also that we're going to face trials and tribulation. Those are also promises of God when we stand for righteousness. And I find that when we stand for righteousness, that we are standing for righteousness in a cruel and dark world who don't know him. And because it, we step on their toes, so to speak, and we try to make them understand that this out of love that we and compassion that we want to give them Christ because they we want to see them go to heaven. Uh, they first have to realize that they are people who are in need of a savior. And before they can realize that, they gotta realize that they are sinners, they got to realize that they are in a place where God wants to turn their lives around and correct them. And they don't want to walk away from what they enjoy doing, just like it was with us until the spirit of God came, until this daylight shined in our hearts. We were one who, you know, leave me alone. I'm liking my life the way it is. But, you know, uh, once once the, the light came and it caused us to realize that we actually are hell bound. We are actually in need of Christ. We are actually in need of, a, of, of needing Jesus Christ as Savior. You know, um, until we realize that we are always, we uh, sinners are always going to be uh, indifferent. And so um, whatever trials and tribulations that we might face because of this being a dark world, that we are not to give up. Uh, we are not to uh, give in. And that we must, you know, stand for what uh, God wants us to stand for. And that is for his goodness uh, to stand in place of, of righteousness and be the spokesman, be the right arm of righteousness, to be the right hand for God so that they may know that Christ died for us. Christ gave his life for us and that it was not in vain that he did it. And it was something that we could not do ourselves. And so God wants us to continue to do what it is that God wants us to do. And so um, I prayed and asked God to give me what I need to say. And I believe that I, I just, I, I'm at a uh, standstill now and I've run out of things. So I could have read a whole lot more, but I didn't want to necessarily bring up a lot of things that would cause you not to be able to follow it as well. I, I hope that most of you have gotten out of this or whatever uh, God has put in your heart. Cause I pray that you would have an understanding. I pray that that I pray that uh, what I what was said tonight uh, was something that God wanted you to hear. And so I hope that there was a little something that you got out of it to the extent that uh, you would understand a little more about another apostle, another disciple that uh, God raised up to be an example for us that are written in scriptures. So let us continue to uh, look to Christ. Let us continue to hold fast the truths that are in the scripture and that those examples through the apostles or examples for our learning and that we continue to uh, realize that these things that they go through, we might just have to go through ourselves. And if we don't, I give God the praise. If we do, we give God the praise. And we just conclude it as what God wants us to do. Uh, let's continue to pray for one another uh, and continue to uh, read our word and continue to be a blessing to someone as we realize that, that we have the blessing of the day. Uh, I thank God for you. I pray continually for you. Uh, I, I do love you in the Lord and I'm hoping that you continue to pray for me and the strength that we need for Gretchen and I for our journey has changed. Our journey is beginning in another area and we're just 
going to believe God to help us to do what he wants us to do, and that is to glorify him and to win souls for Christ. May God richly bless you. God bless you, and have a blessed night. Uh, Pastor, if there's anything you want to say or if you no, are on the line, I'm not sure. I can't see. Thank you, Brother Harris. I'm here. Go ahead and close. Right. Go ahead and close. Okay, so... Father, we just want to thank you right now, God, and we just want to praise you again. Lord, we give you the glory. We give you the honor. We thank you, Lord God, for how you're moving by the power of your spirit, Lord. Lord, help us to continue to realize, God, that we need you, Lord, each and every moment, each and every time, Lord, just to even learn something, Lord, just to realize, God, that you are here, Lord God, and that we will do and be the part of the body of Christ that you called us to be, Lord, because we make up this body of Christ, Lord. Let the truth continue to reign in our lives, Lord. Help us, Lord God, to have a nice people sleep, Lord. We praise you until tomorrow. We, Your will is that you don't come back, Lord. We'll be on the prayer line tomorrow, God, and we praise you for it in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen and amen. God bless you and good night. Good night, yeah. everybody. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good, Good night, night everybody. Good, Good night. night. Hey, Denise. Good night, Bye. everybody. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bless you, honey. <laughs> Good night, yep, all. I thought it's... Good night. Bye, Denise. Bye. 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 Have a good night, honey. <laughs>